Welcome to Nobilis Erotica, the best science fiction and fantasy erotica anthology podcast in the known universe. This week's story, an orgy, sort of. This is episode 437. I am your host, Nobilis Reed. This episode of Nobilis Erotica is sponsored by the generous patronage of Nobilis Erotica listeners. To help out paying the authors and voices that create these stories, visit patreon.com slash nobilis. This week's story is The Bell House Invitation by M. Christian. This is an audio excerpt from the collection Hard Drive, narrated by Michael Robbins. M. Christian is an acknowledged master of erotica, with stories in Best American Erotica, Best Gay Erotica, Best Lesbian Erotica, Best Bisexual Erotica, Best Fetish Erotica, and more anthologies than I have time to name. He is also an accomplished anthologist himself, having edited numerous collections, and now as senior columnist for The Future of Sex, has embarked on a new career as a futurist. Find all the details at mchristian.com. Here we go. The Bell House Invitation I had a low-level subscription to CivicNet through Bert's municipal contract work so I also had access to the neighborhood watches. Even with their decades-old black-and-white photosensitive silicon eyes and blurry still images, I could see it was her. She was right on time, walking slowly down Ashbury, scanning first down one side, then the other of the narrow tree-lined street. Her face gleamed from her pocket pal's brilliant glow as she tried to access the hate community database. She'd never find my address. It was unlisted. The firebombing last summer had cost me not only a patch of juniper on my front steps, it had also taken away my faith in community security. But I wanted her. I needed her to find me. Even with four minds and a million gig memory, it's still surprising how often you forget where you put the car keys. I, we, should have thought that she'd never find our address on her own. So, with a flash of crimson embarrassment on Eve's face, she was the best at that. I reached out, not even a stretch, to the local net and into her pal. Mail changed the intensity of the light playing on her face, my abashed admission of forgetfulness making her lovely face smile, obvious on the low-resolution neighborhood eyes. Welcome, welcome. Come on in, I said with Larry as he opened the front door. Here, let me take your coat. Thanks for showing me the way, Sarah said, pulling herself out of her Kelvex armor jacket and handing it to Larry, who deftly hung it on a curled brass hook in the hall. I used Larry to give a little laugh, for he was good at such things. So much for strength or smarts and numbers. Larry was a warm sort, fireplace kind of man, professionally jolly, salt and pepper beard, long gray hair from a butter-basted high forehead. I resisted the urge to have him wear a tweed coat and smoke a pipe while in the house, aside from being a cliché, which Eve wouldn't have liked. Larry didn't smoke and thought tweed was just too damn itchy. Can I get you something to drink? We've got a complete medical pharma machine. Name your poison, I said, using Lorraine as Sarah stepped into the living room. Lorraine's smile was good, maybe not as good as Larry's, but still warm and inviting or so I earnestly hoped. Maybe a dash of tryptophase in an espresso, Sarah said, returning the smile as her eyes took in the front room. Woman after my own heart, I said with Lorraine, turning her towards the Krupp's distiller and dedicating her hands to the drink preparation subroutines. Something to get the juices going with that little something extra to make it hard to forget. When I noted Sarah staring, Shocked momentarily at the sight of Lorraine's hands, moving butterfly swiftly, precisely on their own through a ritual preparation of the drink, while Lorraine was turned completely away. I quickly turned Lorraine back to stare at her dancing fingers, even though the hands were quite capable of doing the job without her direct supervision. Takes a bit to get used to, doesn't it? I said through Larry, as I walked him around the sofa to stand next to Sarah. This is going to sound even stranger but even I find it amazing sometimes. You're right, Sarah said, smiling again. It does. I mean, I've done some experimenting, but still. Time to bring in Eve. Reaching out, I brought her in, 
Smiles weren't Eve's forte, but I still coaxed one onto her thin face. It's kind of like lucid dreaming in a way, I had her say. When you suddenly have that, hey, I'm dreaming feeling. Otherwise, it feels like I have eight hands, eight eyes, eight feet. Not to mention four breasts and two dicks, I said with Larry as he took a seat in one of the Eames chairs. It's kind of like this place. Four different tastes combining to make one room. Larry here, I touched my soft hand to my chest, likes fireplaces and hardwood floors. Warm Pacific Northwest. Lorraine likes austere high tech. For Eve, it's Chinese antiques. And Bert likes coffee tables and comfy sofas. Combine all that and you get this room. Fused. We're like that, all of us, together forming one complete personality. I could see Sarah scanning the room, the great red brick fireplace dominating one corner, the glowing floor of immaculately buffed oak boards surrounding the great oval wool rug. Like a molten gold moat, the red coral Chinese cabinets and the simple, precise forms of the Ames furniture. I could see Sarah with Larry's eyes, Eve's eyes, and the hundred or so sensors hidden in the exposed beams between the bricks of that fireplace, and even in the substance of the chairs, a rise of blood pressure, a slightly higher heart rate, pupils wide and fascinated. She understood. It scared her, but she understood. I've done some experimenting, of course, at the university, but nothing this elaborate. Bert's told you, of course. Bert was in the office, trying to fix that stubborn biometric reader. The moment I grasped her mood, I brought him in, reaching into my memories for a familiar gesture. Even though his hands were perfectly clean, I walked him in, wiping his great worker's hands with a crazy-colored kitchen towel. You're being too modest. You've done some pretty adventurous experimenting, Sarah. You wouldn't be here otherwise, I said with his lips, walking him in and giving her a big hug. But you wanted to try more, right? She nodded, suddenly shy. Lorraine's memories of her years dealing with addicts and their reactions almost made me laugh at Sarah's obvious body language. Instead, I put one of Bert's big hands on her shoulder, leaned forward, and kissed her on the cheek. Bert's memories tumbled through me, sunlight on her smooth white back as she stretched out on a hotel bed, her breath on his neck, the delightful curve of hip to leg, a dark triangle of curls. Her faint, almost there, almost not aroma of desire, the way her areolas swelled from smooth coins on nicely firm breasts to brown cones. I had eight arms, eight legs, and four heads. I was one gay man, one bisexual woman, one straight man, and one straight woman. The feelings roared through our entirety. Lorraine's cunt twanged, a deep bass string pluck of desire. Larry was hard, his modest dick, a sudden insistent erection. Eve's nipples, always her first sign of desire, ached in her bra, and Bert's cock started to throb. I dropped through levels of emotional complexity, diving down to base physiology. My heart rates, my pupil dilations, my hormone surges were as easy to control as one of my legs or arms. That's why we're here. You're interested and I might be open to having a new participant, I said with Larry, as I moved Bert back to the couch, sat him down, Sarah sat down, close, but not too close. It's a little confusing, but I am interested. The tests I did at the university showed that I like the feeling that we are more than just ourselves, that we're able to share other people's minds, memories, and experiences. When Bert mentioned he was part of one, and said that you might be willing to take on a new member. I just had to at least talk to all of you. Well, I said, moving Eve into the room, sitting her down on the brick hearth. That's one thing that's great about being unified. You are talking to all of us at once. I mean, outside this house, we're individuals, but here in Bell House, we're fused. We are our Strasfield Limited Personality Index, a pocket collective, I said with Lorraine as she handed Sarah her drink. We're Bert, and everything Bert is, but we're also Eve, Larry, and Lorraine. This once with company I let go. I let 
All of myself smile together in a wide, broad joke, an identical smile on four wildly dissimilar faces. I don't call myself B-E-L-L for nothing. Sarah smiled as well. And Bert's memories of her laugh, her eyes heavily lidded after orgasm, all his memories of times with her, his visions of her, flickered through our minds. My mind. I batten the hatches again, tripping a sequence of memory blocks and sensory cutouts. I came back to present consciousness, an electronic, limbic reminder of what I was trying to do. Sarah was exceptional. Her mnemonic index was off the scale, her integration threshold a miracle to behold, her sensory feedback range the envy of all of us. It was lust, but lust of a different kind, the lust of the bell house for a new glorious member, a finely turned limb. I liked that feeling, that sense of thoroughness, belonging, really understanding someone else, Sarah said, gently blowing on her drink. She took a sip without changing her expression. I was frightened, but after the first few times I was more frightened of what other people were starting to say about me, the worried looks they gave me, than of anything I felt when I was linked. My mother, she tried to get me out of the program, called the department head to get me out of the experimental group. I remember not being angry. I stared at the phone as she yelled at me and didn't get angry. I just wanted to bring her there to the lab, hook her up, make her see the world through my eyes for once, have her meet the person that she and I would be if we were linked together, to make her understand how it feels. Believe me, us, I know, I said with Lorraine's deep tones, a brace around our minds, the McKellen restrictions kept my internal connections at frustrating levels. It had the crude feeling of federal software something iron, heavy, and legislative. The restrictions kept me from getting too smart, from spreading out beyond the walls of the house. I felt a half-formed revelation that just wouldn't come, an inspiration that wouldn't complete its birth. You feel how good linking is, how it combines and amplifies, how it unblinkingly shows us someone else's mind and shows them ours. You know it's good. You want to share it, but then the voice starts the one that echoes what they say about it. Is it me or is the desire speaking? I finished with Larry's gravelly voice. I put out one of Bert's hands, comfortable with his memories of how to touch her, and rested it on her thigh. But it is good. You know a little of how it feels. Just imagine. I don't have the words. How do you describe a color you haven't seen, a taste you've never sampled? Bert knows you've only tried one or two. But I am four. We are four unique minds linked, combined, a gestalt, I said. We are more than just four, Sarah. We're eight, sixteen. Oh, the thoughts. And the work, I added with Eve, keeping the smile on her narrow face. Larry can't play the piano, but now he knows the black keys from the white. Lorraine didn't know the joy of watching a painting emerge from a black canvas. But now she does, because I, we, all know each other intimately. Larry, my excited laugh slipping into his words, you know, we've even been approached to do some data merging with the Deutschland Consciousness Bank. Can you imagine? The greatest series of unified personalities in the world. A thousand of the most brilliant minds on the planet all linked, all focused into one will, one personality. They haven't extended an invitation for years. But just the other day, they tentatively extended an invitation to participate in a logarithmic exchange, a higher brain function kiss with us. Only a kiss, but one with the magnificent multiplication of human consciousness, a legendary gestalt, a faceted expression of will, God. Too many words, ideas that only come close to what merely touching the German bond would be like for me. The best thing, though, was something else I felt in that offer, and even that wasn't precise. Overpowering lust. Eve's vision center, which had a better pattern recognition gradient than the others, caught the barely perceptible flicker around Sarah's eyes. A shudder of hesitation. Lorraine's voice was the most soothing, so I used it. But frankly, I have to be careful. 
The bond is perhaps the greatest fusion of intellects the world has ever produced. Their offering to sync with them is tremendous, so I have to be very selective, very careful in my choices of who to merge with us. I can't just accept anyone with cortical implants and full integration personality suites. I need to accept someone who will add to us, who will combine with us in a perfect, harmonious way. I don't need a body, Sarah. I need the perfect person to lift us, elevate us to become something, someone worthy of the bond. Where did that come from? In a moment too fast for her to notice, but immeasurably long for me, I looked down into ourselves and all my components. Sarah was perfect, ideal. When Bert had brought his memories of her to me, I shared his desire among our minds. But then when her test came back, when I saw all that Sarah was, I knew that I had to have her. I had to touch her, to bring her into me. Her sync ratio was off the scale, her personality well-formed and complete, her fear index flexible and easily controlled by a formidable analytical predisposition. She wasn't the bond, didn't have the glorious illumination of that collective of intellects, but she did have something I couldn't ignore, couldn't forget, just had to have. She was the key that could bring me to them. She was what could make me worthy of a merge with them. My desire was hungry and relentless, but I also felt weakness. That was what I saw when I looked inside into Bert, Eve, Lorraine, and Larry. There was a deep hole in the comfortable scope of their personalities, their merged and combined wills. Like probing a missing tooth, I dipped down into the hole and saw the little pains and fears I had. Individually, they were barely worth noticing, but merged. The little holes formed a pit with a crying child at the bottom. The lie was that child's self-absorbed voice. That needy child spoke through Bert's voice. You understand I can accept only the very best if we're to become something truly wonderful. I can't afford to combine with anything less than perfect. Bert knew just the right series of words, the right tone of voice to pull that lie together. Lorraine's eyes watched, meticulously gauging Sarah's reaction. The sensors built into the house that linked me together reported her physiological changes, body temperature, up 0.013 degrees, carbon dioxide output down by 0.06%, her heart rate accelerated by 22%. But it was Lorraine's dark eyes that saw her pupils dilate and her hands clenched ever so slightly. I put Bert's hand on her thigh, knowing that a comfortable gesture at this point would swing her over. She looked up into Bert's eyes, and even though his perceptual index wasn't as good as Lorraine's, I could still see the change in her face. I want this. I really want this, she said. I've never wanted anything more. I might not be the perfect person, but I think I can bring something good and special to all of you. There were tears lurking in the corners of her eyes, hovering heavy with each word. Without the words of the screaming child that hid down deep in me, she could have turned away. She could have kissed me goodbye and walked out. She could have hesitated, could have said no, but she hadn't. The needy child part of me giggled with delight. The bond was so much closer. All it would take would be a word, and she would become part of me. And as a part of me, I, we, would take a step closer towards the ultimate delight of merging with the bond. With Bert, I said, yes. I have to be very, very careful, but I think we're willing to give you a try. There was laughter, a release of tension. I felt it and shared it with her. I used Eve to go to the kitchen for a bottle of wine. It was grown by a local collective whom I assisted with her financial planning. A toast by Bert, his hand raised, red fluid swaying in my glass. To marriage! She laughed. So I laughed, a chorus of delight coming from our four different mouths, four different bodies. I drank, one glass, two, three. I felt myself grow a little drunk, like a limb falling asleep. Bert held his liquor better. He was clear and calm. Eve felt numb, her fingertips tingly. Lorraine felt warmth like a fire glowing in her belly. 
but Larry felt it most of all. His vision tilted and rolled with every movement. Decision made, I talked. Light, airy, unimportant. She asked what I shared, how much I knew of each other. Everything? There are degrees, I said, using Eve's voice. When you were at the lab, you were joined at level five or six, and only for a few minutes. I stay at level seven or eight, with long-term sensory memory and limbic cognitive ability. But it's more the duration than the depth. We've grown together. We've become more and more what I, we are, and not just the parts that are integrated. I not only know, Bert's hand again on her firm, hard thigh, what Bert knows, but also what Bert feels, his emotions, even the emotions behind his emotions. I leaned forward and grazed Bert's lips across her cheek, feeling her gently shiver, his hand move up her thigh and squeezed again. I felt the muscles there quake suddenly, a deep tremor I remembered from those late afternoons in motel rooms. Bert and Sarah hadn't been deep lovers, but they'd done more than just share bodily pleasure. In a kind of limbo, they'd enjoyed each other's bodies, refreshing themselves in the touch of another person. But in our house, linked and fused through our network of interface modules and microwave repeaters working in an elegant electronic ballet with each of our cortical implants, it was more than just Bert involved with Sarah. Bert may not love Sarah, but I was more than just Bert. Using Lorraine's lithe, long body, I got up to sit next to Sarah, adding her heat to the one being stoked by Bert. In the corner of myself, that was Lorraine's mind, I could see Sarah as reflected by Bert's memories in a kind of multiplex desire that for a moment even eclipsed our passion to meet with a German bond. All of me shared in Bert's desire for Sarah. In an echo, Lorraine's lips also grazed Sarah's. I blinked, shocked by the desire flowing through my veins, pounding in all four of my hearts. I, we, I started to say with Eve, but Sarah was kissing Bert, and I couldn't speak, even though I had three other sets of lips. Lorraine's hands stroked her thigh as she kissed me on Bert's lips. When the kiss broke, I stretched out Lorraine's hand, gently coaxing her mouth over to Lorraine's. The kiss was hot, deep, and thorough. A wash of deja vu rocked through my mind, Bert's memories backed up by the new ones flowing from Lorraine's lips. It was exhibitionism and voyeurism in one single lovely kiss. With Bert's strong hands, I cupped Sarah's plump, full breast, feeling the nipple hard against my palm. As she kissed Lorraine, I gently squeezed in the way I knew she liked. When she eventually broke the kiss, it was to moan, deep, low, throaty, before turning to Bert's lips. Sarah was wearing a silk blouse printed with a picture of the earth as seen from space. The picture was stretched and distorted by her large breasts, Lorraine's hands again, skillful and quick. One button, two, three, the fullness of Sarah's breasts making each pop gently, springing aside to reveal her tan skin, then a brownish wrinkled nipple. It wasn't a wise choice, but an understandable one. Four minds, four wills, four lives full of memories and self-control was replaced by a four-fold thunder of lust. With Eve, I knelt down and slowly crawled forward, till her breath was warm against Sarah's soft stomach. There I paused to savor the hot musk of her excitement. Distantly, I recalled a memory of Bert's, Sarah telling him about a fantasy of being completely and utterly filled. Larry laughed gently at the thought. I kissed her with Lorraine, a wandering dreamtime kiss. With Bert's strong hands, I kneaded her thighs, feeling them turn into relaxed cushions under my fingers. With Eve's mouth, I kissed the wrinkled tip of one breast, gently nursing the nipple into a hot, hard tip of skin. Eve was wet, her cunt pulsing with basic hunger. Bert was hard, his cock throbbing to the fast beat of his heart. Lorraine was wet as well a deep kind of wet, 
where her own pussy felt like it was going to melt and flow. Larry was hard, but his hand was free. So as I kissed, felt, and licked, I also stroked the hard shaft of Larry's cock, relishing in the self-pleasure while the sensations of my other bodies rolled and surged through all of me. Sarah was wearing simple cotton leggings and elegant black flats as Eve gently tugged the leggings down, revealing a moist tangle of curls. Sarah kicked off her shoes and carefully spread her legs. She giggled and murmured, It's like I know all of you. This doesn't seem strange at all. But her sentence ended with a tone of fear. Bert said, You do know all of us because we're all Bert, just as we're the rest of us. Bert cares for you. So we all do. The leggings joined Sarah's simple flats on the carpet. Her blouse was open, spread wide and revealing her breasts. Removing it was unnecessary. With Lorraine, I bent down and kissed the ignored other nipple. As with Bert's strong hand, I turned her head towards his lips and lost that part of myself in another wandering kiss. Sarah's thighs were slick and hot, with a fine taste of sweat and molten cunt. Eve's hands were perfect to push them apart. With a ballet smoothness, I put Bert's hand on her left leg and gently pulled, just as I did with Lorraine's on the right. Eve's lips tasted her deeply then, an insistent sampling of her sweet juice. It was a lovely concert of sensation as Eve's taste buds compared and contrasted what they experienced against Bert's memory. Distantly, I wished to taste her with all of me to compare her juice with each of their mouths. Bert's memory whispered that she'd shared with him a fantasy of having many partners at once, and I realized I just might. She came, a heavy breathing orgasm filling Bert's mouth with her moan, with Eve's lips on her cunt lips and clit, and Lorraine's firm lips on her left nipple. In my hand, Larry's cock throbbed and pulsed, beating along with her hearts. Bert was big, and he had a fine, strong cock, but Larry was gifted with a truly big cock. She came again, moaning and almost screaming into Bert's mouth, and after she came, we allowed her to calm, to descend from that high point. But our excitement was still throbbing in our two cocks, our two cunts, our eight nipples. Breaking the kiss with Bert, Lorraine kissed her cheek. I want to fuck you, I said with Lorraine. I want to fuck you. I said with Eve, cheeks glistening with juice from between her thighs. I want to fuck you, with Bert, his cock throbbing in his pants. I want to fuck you, I said with Larry, as he stood and walked towards her, my great dick bobbing with every step. Sarah nodded, turning back towards Bert. I want you too, she said, entering again into a deep kiss as I moved Eve aside to allow Larry to kneel and push forward. With Lorraine's hands, I pulled her thighs further apart, then guided Larry's cock inside her. In, 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 I was able to feel a fuck from within a man, echoed with the memories of a woman's cunt and a queer man's hungry asshole. I started to fuck her, lost in the feeling of Sarah's cunt around my cock her nipple in my mouth, her thigh in my hand. I fucked, licked, stroked, and kissed her. I fucked, licked, stroked, and kissed her. I fucked, licked, stroked, and kissed her until I came. We came, a jetting orgasm deep inside Bert's pants, between Lorraine's tightly squeezed thighs, with Eve's hand inside herself. I came, Sarah came again and we all came, all me, together. Larry's body was too tired to speak, still racked with post-orgasm tremors, so I let him fall down to the wool rug to rest. I used Lorraine instead. I want to join with you. As I used E's voice to say, I want to join with you. As I spoke with Bird's lips, peeled away from hers, I want to join with you. And finally with Bert, I said it one more time. I want to join with you. I want to join with you too, Sarah said, without hesitation, without fear. So I did. It was even better than the fuck.
and so Sarah joined me. I laughed afterward, that I'd made myself plural. Now I was the bell's house, the place of many, where there had been just one. No words were enough to describe it, not a thousand, not a million. It was perfect, ideal. I knew it would be good, had planned that it to be so ideal, but it was more than just that. Sarah completed me. There'd been empty places, fears multiplied by four, but where there'd been darkness, Sarah brought golden, glowing understanding and love. Before, in moments of weakness, I had lied to get what I wanted. After Sarah, well, I understood that and loved myself. No need for lies, not anymore. In the end, I didn't join the German bond. Part of it was that I didn't need to. I was Bert, Eve, Larry, Lorraine, and Sarah, and that was good. But there was something else. We did try to join the bond. We met with them on the net, exchanged greetings, and started to discuss the possibility. It wasn't their words, wasn't exactly what they said, they didn't say. You know, we have to be very careful about who we invite. We only pick the very best. They didn't use the same lie I'd used to tantalize Sarah, the one I'd spoken out of weakness and need, but what they did say had exactly the same feeling, the exact same fear. So I stepped away from them. And as I did, I wished them well and expressed my hope that someday they would find what they needed, just as I did. And that's our story. At this time, I'd like to send a huge thanks to Zach, who pledged at the $100 level for a command performance written to his specifications. Oh my god! I have been working on this story all month, and I hope to bring it to you all soon. Thank you so much, Zach. You have been listening to the Nobilis Erotica podcast. The music is composed and performed by Mass Relay. This podcast is released under a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license. Until next time, listen hard.